Hello everyone, we will continue with the sports textiles. So, what we are discussing in last class? So, different uh, innovative sports textile products. So, now we will start with compression athletic wear or in short CAW. The compression athletic wear like tights, elastic are used among power based sports, where we need high energy heavy power for better fit enhancing performance and recovery in the muscle. So, in power sports we need free movement of our body and this type of athletic wear should be able to enhance our performance and most important the recovery from muscle fatigue it should enhance that so that muscle uh, fatigueness is not there. The skin 400 it is such a product which is elastin incorporated warp knitted product and here the increase in oxygen delivery to the active muscles are there by dynamic gradient compression. So, due to compression dynamic gradient compression the active oxygen delivery is there at different muscles the muscles which are active. So, there will be higher oxygen delivery. So, as reported that enhanced performance by using compression athletic wear may be due to improved venous return and cardiac input which would reduce cardiovascular stress on athletic. So, this was reported in 1991. Now, we will discuss another area of sportswear, specialty sportswear, which is swimwear. A swimming costume is an item of clothing designed to be worn by people engaging in water, any sorts of water sports, water based activities, we can use this swimwear. These water sports are swimming, water polo, diving, surfing, water skiing or sunbathing. There in swimming wear psychophysiological comfort that is both psychological comfort and physiological comforts are required like fit it should fit well with the swimmer it should not be loose it should fit with the body design is also important color is important coverage of body depending on the requirement or maybe gender thermal properties are important and performance factor the swimmer should get assistance from swimwear for better performance. So, there are developments I will just discuss where proper designing or proper selection of fiber proper designing of the fabric structure enhance the performance of swimmer. As far as fit is concerned the elasticity of the fabric is very important it should fit well with the body contour it should not be loose or uh, tight. So, properly it should follow the body contour and it gives slimming effect okay, of the swimmer particularly women loose held feet swimming when it weights it will stick to the body. So, loosely held suit is not that important uh, uh, required for swimming design as far as design is concerned it should not offend 
morality. So, designing should be such according to the international standard FINA, which actually gives or uh, which um, uh, directs different guidelines for swimwear. Combination of maximum two layers are permitted for designing swimwear we must take this into account. Inside layer can be used for comfort and protection of sensitive parts. The total thickness is proposed 0.8 millimeter, total permeability should be more than 80 liter per square meter per second, when stretch is 25 percent. So, this should be the permeability should not be less than this and the cloth should not be transparent. These are the guidelines of swimwear. The color it depends on the wearer, the coverage depends on the activity, gender and function. So, activity for as far as swimming or sunbathing or skiing or scuba diving depending on the activity. The coverage of the swimmer is that they change as far as gender men or women there are standard coverage specified and for function that performance suit or daily activity suit. So, we have to change the coverage whether we are using for a performance purpose or daily activity depending on this we can change the coverage. As far as thermal properties are concerned for scuba diving more thermal insulated materials are required neoprene rubber coated clothing are used which provides smoothness and keep body temperature normal under deep sea water. So, proper thermal uh, properties are important and the fabric should be dr should dry quickly because they have to use uh, repeatedly. So, additional design innovations are the inner layer is of mesh material. So, basic requirement of swim swimwear is that that should not stick or cling with our body. So, if we use mesh material, so less sticking problem will be there. This mesh get attached to the body and giving stretch to upper layer with body movement. So, less friction on the body surface. So, this mesh will be st will stick to the body they, they will not move against the, the skin. So, rubbing action will not be there, but at the same time the upper layer will get stressed and which will change with our body contour movement contour change during the movement and this will provide air breathability. Elasticity and stretchability of swimwear is extremely important because it provides best fit to the body. Here swimmer acts as a second skin. So, our free body movement should be there during the swimming and this swimmer should stick to the body. It should not move against the body for like other clothing material. Also the swimmer should be designed to reduce the drag. So, human body more drag local pressure resistance centers include the head, shoulder, knees and heels. In these areas including other areas also the higher drags are there. So, compression from the tight fit swimmer as the swimwear applies excess pressure and compress the body it reduces the drag force and it improves 
the streamlined shape of the swimmer. So, the tight fit swimwear due to its compression, so drag force during the swimming operation reduces and a better ergonomic swimmer design, swimwear design is required for streamlined movement. So, that one can design the swimwear for better streamlined movement. As far as moisture management characteristics of swimwear is concerned, it should not absorb moisture, otherwise it will have extra drag force, wicking properties should be high, whatever water is there it should get wicked out, microfibers are used polyester microfibers, these are used due to higher wicking and they do not stick or cling when it is worn in wet condition. So, swimwear are normally in wet condition, so they should not cling to with our body and this fabric should be fast dry to avoid the water accumulation and penetration. They should dry fast. As far as drag force is concerned, there are two types of drag force. One is called passive drag force, when swimmer is stationary, this he is not moving due to the hydrodynamic force that occur when swimmer remains stable and not moving any part of the body. So, in case of hydrodynamic force this is called drag force passive drag and active drag is that when swimmer is actually moving. So, active swimming this includes passive drag and pressure or wave drag. So, there are two drags, the pressure and wave drags are due to the movement of the swimmer. The pressure drag is more than the skin friction drag, so that involve actually drag. So, innovative performance swimwear takes pressure drag into consideration. So, for designing the innovative swimmer, this pressure drag one has to take into consideration. First thing is that it should not be absorbent, so water repellent coating is required to reduce the drag, ultra thin elastic fabric to increase the body smoothness and also there are swimwear with V shaped ridges are there on the skin of the fabric outer surface which decrease the surface friction and turbulence. So, during the movement its surface friction reduces. So, swimmer so the drag force reduces. Biomechanical variables are also there these are one of them uh, is uh, stroke rate if too high stroke rates are used that is that in that case the if the swimmer is trying to use a very high rate of stroke the problem would be that muscle does not get enough time to recover between two bursts and thus early fatigue will be there. So, mu muscle should come back immediately to enhance the time for fatigue. This is done by the proper designing of the swimmer and proper elastic material is used. Due to swimsuit longer distance travel per stroke, swimming velocity also increase by a factor of 20 percent. So, longer distance per stroke is important to reduce the stroke rate. Now, coming to the fabric materials for swimwear, the conventional clothing can weigh up to 4 kg when it is fully soaked and their tendency is to slip down. So, lower friction between the skin and fabric 
will enhance the sleeping capacity um, tendency and they absorb liquid. So, basic requirement of the materials used for swimming swimwear is that it should be lightweight, it should be recoverable, the elastic recovery should be high, high tensile qualities in most adverse environment and moment the, the movement of the body should not get restricted. So, it should be the, there should be elasticity, the materials used in swimwear are typically polyester and nylon. So, polyester due to their various characteristics, strong resilient fiber, soft and comfortable in fit which is required for swimwear, durable, abrasion resistant, quick drying, clothing resistant, UV protection. So, these are the characteristics of polyester. As far as nylon is concerned, their main characteristics abrasion resistant, some commercially available brands are where we can see that nylons are generally used along with the elastin. So, polyamide and elastins are their blends are used typically around 70 to 80 percent nylons are used and 20 to 30 percent elastins are used for this type of swimwear brands. Another type of swimwear that is which is used which a polyurethane coating. So, polyurethane chloropene uh, chloroprene coating which is 50 percent and 55 percent and around 40 percent nylons are used. So, it is uh, polyurethane uh, coated which is used for some specialty sports textile. So, technical swimsuit their main focus in better performance. So, super stretch fabrics are used which improves the streamline shape of the body to reduce the drag. Compression compressing the skin and muscle increase the muscle power. So, the swimwear should be able to compress the skin. Another important feature of the technical swimsuit is that ultrasonic welding instead of semi. So, here to have higher um, lower surface drag, so more smoothness. So, instead of stitching the ultrasonic welding is used. So, swimming cap is also important the swimming velocity effect on swimming velocity interaction between hydrodynamic drag force and propelling force for higher velocity lower hydrodynamic drag force is required is there when we use swimming cap more propelling force more streamlined shape. So, the swimmer is along with the swimming cap would enhance the performance. For children swimmer there are some specific requirement. So, to reduce the drowning case additional floating jackets are used. So, this flotation device will enhance the floating characteristics and basically greater buoyancy on front keeps wearer face up from water. Now, we have discussed the this commercially available products. In next section, we will discuss the different constructional parameters, effect of different constructional parameters on the comfort characteristics of swimwear. So, here we will use the only knitted swimwear because knitted swimwears are mainly used due to their 
stretchability characteristics, the fabrics used are here, these are basically not only for uh, swimming, for any high activity sportswear. So, in fabric constructional parameter, the fabric structure was changed, fiber characteristics what we have used the fiber diameter, different fiber diameters were used, filament cross sections were changed. In high active sports where only the filaments are used because high rate of sweat generation we require wicking. So, for higher wicking rate we need filaments not the stapelion. The comfort properties were measured that is uh, liquid transmission, heat and moisture transmission. So, different transmission characteristics were measured. The fabric structures were this is interlock structure there are different types of fabric, fabric structures were there. So, interlock structure, plated structure, float plated structure and double layer two layer structure fabric structure. These are the different structures which are used for active sportswear and these are the different filament cross sections. In the study what we have taken we have taken two series of standard sportswear series T is used for high active tennis sportswear with of international brand large number of sportswear were taken and what has been observed in all the sportswear for tennis and soccer. So, tennis series T, soccer series S, what we have observed the almost all the sportswear the filaments are used and the filament cross sections are not circular, they are deviation from circularity to enhance the change the shape factor for enhancing the wicking characteristics. This is for soccer what we have observed again in case of the filaments used in soccer also they are different shapes deviation from circularity. When we come study what we have observed the different types of structures are used both for tennis sportswear and for soccer and in interlock what has been observed the air permeability is least and where float plated structure air permeability is higher followed by the two layer structure. So, where we need air permeability higher air permeability we must use the float plated structure. Now, coming to the relative water vapor permeability the interlock structure is giving highest relative water vapor permeability here. And this is basically due to the fact that although there are lower pores, but number of pores were very high here which enhance the diffusion of moisture vapor. With the increase in shape factor what has been observed the reduction in the air permeability that we have already observed earlier also. And this is mainly due to higher specific surface area which provides extra drag air permeability and relative permeability if we take the large number of uh, fabrics together they are following almost similar trend except for few structure like interlock structure where air permeability was found lowest, but moisture vapor permeability was very high. Otherwise the air permeability follows the relative moisture vapor permeability trend. As far as thermal resistance is concerned, we can see here interlock structure gives lowest thermal resistance, where 
two layer structure gives maximum thermal resistance. This low thermal resistance is due to the compact structure where air pockets amount of air pockets are less although the size of air pockets were high the size number of air pockets were high, but the size of air pockets were less that is why the thermal resistance is low. Here for two layer structure between the two layers the air entrapment were there that is why it was giving higher thermal resistance. Now, what is the findings in this study? What we have observed the sports sweats are mostly polyester knitted structure made of filaments. The knitted structure is basically due to the stretchability requirement and polyester is hydrophobic. So, it does not absorb moisture, but it weaks quickly. The factors affecting heat and moisture vapor transmissions are the fabric structure, their fabric porosity, type of structure that we have observed, fabric tightness because interlock structure is tighter in nature that is why the thermal transmission is better, filament cross sectional shape and also filament diameter. It has also been observed that wicking rate and wicking properties of the fabric improve with the increase in fiber shape factor as I have already mentioned. Now, another study what was also been carried out where we have observed we have developed plated knitted structure using two different types of filaments of different cross section. Here three different cross sections were taken circular, flat and tetra channel with different shape factors 1, 1.2, 1.39 and contact angle reduces with the increase in shape factor from 76 to 69.7 and filament denier was kept constant. These are the three different filaments flat, circular and tetra channel and in plated fabrics as I have men mentioned that two different filaments were used in a fabric. S11 one, one, one means the filament with higher shape factor like can I this is S1 the tetra channel S3 is the circular S11 one, one, sample 1 1 means both the inner and outer layer fabrics were made from the tetra channel. So, S11 one, one where both the inner and outer layer was made tetra channel is giving highest water overall moisture management capability whereas, the fabric which is made of circular both inner and outer it is giving least moisture management capability. So, we have to select the filament cross section accordingly amount of water absorbed. So, this is highest in S11 where both the layers are made of the tetra channel absorption is also highest similar. So, if we see the fabrics which are made of both layers with the tetra channel filament are giving highest moisture management capacity. So, fabric with tetra channel in on both side so, excellent moisture management, highest bulk absorption capacity, highest in plane wicking, but all these properties deteriorated when it is replaced by the flat or circular and circular when we, we use in both the layers it gives least preferred property, it is a poorest property fabric with circular on both side shows poorest moisture management capability, lowest absorption okay. 
another conclusion from this study was the effect of filament shape factor of inner side of fabric is more pronounced as compared to filament shape factor of in the outer layer. And our next study was that the study on the effect of various coarse spun elastane yarn their parameters on comfort properties of body fit sportswear. So, for body fit sportswear it should be stretchable one. So, for that the coarse spun yarns were used where in the core elastane filaments were used. So, these are the parameters for developing the sportswear. The variables were taken the elastane stretch, twist multiplier and elastane proportion. So, elastane stretch was 1.5 2 times and 2.5 times these are the elastane stretch during the manufacture of coarse spun yarn twist multiplier was increased from 3.54 and 4.5 and elastane percent was varied from 10 percent 15 percent and 20 percent in coarse sheath structure by changing the sheath proportion. So, what has been observed that with the increase in elastane percent and elastane stretch fabric becomes compact because during the production the elastane stretch was applied and that is why the during relaxation the fabric became compact and thick and this will give higher thermal resistance and the reduced air permeability. So, if we want to produce sports clothing with higher breathability or higher air permeability, we must use the lower elastane stretch and lower elastane percent. The wicking height absorption and overall moisture management capacity found to be higher for lower for lower range of elastane stretch and yes. So, if the fabric becomes compact that means, the wicking height reduces and absorption will also reduce. There must be some open space for absorption and wicking height reduction it is due to that the sheath portion that is cotton the sheath portion when it is contracted the creams in the sheath portion is increased that is why the wicking height is reduced. The twist has got significant role in heat and moisture transmission with the increase in twist yarn diameter reduces. So, air permeability, water vapor permeability and overall moisture management capacity increases with the twist because of the diameter increase in yarn, but the wicking height and absorption reduces due to increase in twist because as the twist increases the obliquity effect of fiber increases. So, the liquid in the channel will have to travel higher distance thus the wicking height reduces and absorption reduces because of the compact structure of yarn. And next characteristics is that that next study is the thermophysiological comfort characteristics of polyester elastane plated knitted fabrics. Here it is not like earlier study where we have studied the coarse spun yarn with the polyester so with the elastane in the core and 
staple fiber in the sheath, but here what we have produced the elastin and polyester both filaments were taken and pleated structures were developed both polyester and elastin filaments were taken in parallel manner. The sample codes were it is a T for tetra channel, H for hollow actually mixed hollow and tetra channel, hollow filament, F for flat and C for circular with different shape factors and yarn linear densities were same and same elastins were used. The thermophysiological characteristics were heat and moisture vapor transmissions were measured, liquid moisture transmissions were also measured by using a porous plate, single point plate and moisture management tester. This is the guarded hot plate. Now, if we see the trend here, the fabrics were produced with three different loop length L L 5 means loop length 5 and with the elastin the denier of elastin it is a linear density of elastin is 44 decitex this is the fabric whereas L L 6 means loop length 6 with elastin same elastin we have used here. So, this is shown here with the increase in shape factor as we increase the shape factor of the polyester filament in this plated fabric for all the different loop lengths the reduction in air permeability is observed. The air permeability reduction is due to the increase in shape factor that I have already mentioned as higher shape factor filaments are used more air drag will be there, but another observation here if we want to increase the air permeability we have to use the knitted fabric with higher loop length. So, here the loop length 6 is giving higher air permeability for a particular shape factor than the other fabrics. Similarly, the permeability index also follows the similar trend. Now, as far as wicking characteristics is concerned with the increase in shape factor wickability increases that we know there is wicking speed, but here the trend for wicking with the change in the loop length. So, the fabric with lower loop length is giving higher wicking speed because the lower loop length means the yarns are the loop size is less and the water the liquid the transmission length the wicking length will be short. So, the water has to travel shorter distance that is why the wicking speed increases with the reduction in loop length and moisture absorption increase with the increase in shape factor and increase in the loop length. So, higher loop length means uh, the more space more uh, higher porous porosity in the structure. So, higher absorption will be there. So, the conclusion in this study is the fabric liquid transmission and overall moisture management capacity significantly increases with the increase in filament shape factor. So, if we want to manage the liquid sweat in the sports wear, we have to increase the shape factor. However, fabric become less permeable to air and moisture vapor at higher shape factor. So, for high active sports wear, the air permeability and moisture vapor permeability is not that important important factor is that the liquid moisture management that is why we must use the 
fiber or filament with higher shape factor. The fabric knitted at longer loop length are more permeable to wear that is obvious we have observed. Increase in elastin linear density deteriorates the thermophysiological comfort characteristics. So, I can just show here in this picture we will see that this graph it is showing the loop length 6 with the 78 decitex elastin and this one is the loop length 6 with the 44 decitex elastin. So, with the increase in elastin denier if we compare this uh, line the top line and the bottom line this is made of the coarser elastin. So, moisture absorption capacity reduces with the increase in elastin also if we see here this is the 78. So, wicking speed also reduces with the increase in elastin denier this is the den elastin with 78 denier uh, decitex uh, elastin here it is a 44 decitex elastin this is 44 decitex and this is 78. So, this actually wicking speed also reduces with the increase in denier. So, increase in elastin linear density deteriorates the thermophysiological comfort characteristics of sportswear. And next study is dynamic compression behavior of compression athletic wear. Here we have used the exactly same uh, set of fabrics this is plated knitted fabric with polyester and elastin the same and here the elastic recovery was tested and dynamic interface pressure was studied this was studied in this uh, instrument. Now this diagram shows that the effect of the time on pressure drop. So, for elastin fabric the tight fit sportswear like swimwear or athletic wear where we wear tight fit sportswear to enhance our the body uh, the performance. So, here compression force is extremely important as I have already discussed, but the there are some factors which affect the pressure drop. So, higher pressure drop means the sportswear will not be able to retain the pressure on the body. Here again we have studied the effect of loop length. So, with the increase in time the pressure drop is increasing that means the fabric become gradually loose is not able to retain the pressure. So, for this is true for all the fabrics and this one is for blue line is for loop length 4. So, loop length uh, 5 with 44 decitex 44 decitex elastin. So, here this figure shows that with the lower loop length the pressure drop is low. As we increase the loop length the pressure drop increases. So, highest pressure drop is for loose structure with loop length 6. So, to retain the pressure drop we must use the lower loop length. So, to retain the compressive pressure here this is the loop length with a 44 decitex with 6 loop length and 72 decitex with 6 loop length these are the two fabrics this figure shows if we use the higher denier higher decitex elastin in the fabric that this plated fabric the pressure drop is low. So, higher their coarser 
filament we have to use coarser elastin we have to use to maintain the pressure. So, it is suggested that for the high active sportswear where we need the compressive pressure compressive behavior for those applications we must use the that elastin with higher linear density to retain the pressure. And this figure shows the effect of the filament cross section. Here we can see the circular cross section filament gives the maximum maximum pressure drop and whereas, the tetra channel with higher shape factor results lowest pressure drop. So, to retain the shape and to retain the compressive pressure from this study we can conclude that one should use the filament polyester filament with higher shape factor elastane filament with higher linear density and the leaded fabric with lower loop length. So, to maintain the uh, pressure that compressive pressure to enhance for enhancing the performance. So, the conclusions of fibers and fabric constructional parameters have significant effect of elastic recovery and pressure drop within the time within certain time. So, pressure drop we must actually square the lower pressure drop, so that the compressive pressure is maintained tighter structure shows higher compression pressure with lower rate of pressure drop and good elastic recovery. Tighter structure means we should go for lower loop length. Fabric knitted with coarser elastin shows more consistent compression pressure over time that is lower pressure drop. Modified polyester cross section same shows better compression efficiency that is the it reduces the pressure drop with increase shape factor. So, with the if we increase higher shape factor polyester it reduces the pressure drop and improved recovery characteristics. So, that is all with sports textile in next class we will start with a new topic till then thank you.